everyone. Good morning, everyone. Thursday morning. I want to welcome you to our morning service and be here in Jesus' name. We're going to sing our theme song that we should know very well by now. Tis the blessed hour of prayer, hymn number 501. Tis the blessed hour of prayer. Sing together. Tis the blessed hour. Tis the blessed hour of prayer. When our hearts. When our hearts only bow. As we gather. As we gather to Jesus, our Savior and so If we come to him. If we come to him in faith. Him in faith his protection his to share. What a bomb. What a bomb. Can I have a bit less keys, please? Oh, how sweet. Let's sing. Blessed are the in unison. Blessed are, blessed are. On this Thursday morning, sing blessed are of prayer. Yeah. So what a bomb for the weary. What a bomb for the weary. Oh, how sweet. Look at the verse 2. Is the blower? Is the blessed? Tis the blessed hour. When the Savior draws near. When the Savior draws near. To the saint. With tender cup, his children to hear, his children to When he tells us we may come, at his feet every care. What a bomb for Oh, how sweet. Give me some parts now. Blessed our prayer. Blessed our Lovely. Sounds nice this morning. Blessed our prayer. Yeah, yeah, so what a bomb for the weary. Oh, how sweet. Let's go to verse 3. Tis the blessed hour of prayer. Tis the blessed hour. When we're tempted and when we're tried. And we talked yesterday about how God loves us. And how we can confide in Him. With a sympathizing heart. And he removes all of our cares. He removes every What a bomb for Oh, how sweet. Let's get to the chorus. Blessed our prayer. Blessed our prayer. What a bomb for Oh, how sweet. Last verse, the blessed hour of prayer. Tis the blessed hour. Say, trusting in Him, we will trust in Jesus. Trusting Him, we be. That the blessings that we're needing, that the blessings we will surely receive. We will surely receive. In the fullness of His trust, we shall lose all of our cares. Because what a bomb for the weary. What a bomb. Oh, how sweet. Oh, how Let's sing the chorus in past now. Give me something back. Blessed are our prayers. Blessed are our prayers. Let's sing the chorus one more time. What a bomb for Oh, how sweet. Oh, how sing one more time. Blessed are our prayers. Blessed are our prayers. What a bomb. Amen, amen. Each time I hear the song, Blessed Hour of Prayer, I get excited as I go and face my loving father. Yesterday, I learned that I have a father who loves me. I have a father who cares. I have a father who loves me no matter what. And I don't have to do anything for his love, you know. He just loves me. So when I come to him in prayer, when I come to him with my supplications, I'm just going to my daddy. So I want to say to us this morning, good morning again. 
as for me, you know, how I wish to say good morning and happy Sabbath, but I know I can't say that. I have to say good morning and happy Thursday. Amen. 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 Um, the Bible says this is the day that the Lord has met. In this day, let us be glad and rejoice in this day. It is up to us, you know, to say God, to choose to ignore the bad and smile all the way. Amen. Because God says this is the day that the Lord has met. So we want to welcome you to this morning. And I pray that thus far, if you have been blessed, say amen. 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 So we will begin with a word of prayer, knowing that God is going to bless us again. But this morning, we're just going to, I know all of you are coming so that we pray. We are just going to also pray together this morning. And maybe you have come with that burden. You have come with that request. Today, you have an opportunity to turn to someone near you and you pray with them. Let us pray. Father God. You are amazing. You are powerful. You are wonderful. We want to just commit our lives into your hands. We want to just commit the whole day into your hands and ask you, God, to just show yourself. Shower us with your love. Just do what you do best so that your name in our lives will be glorified. Father, we remember that you said, Without you, we can do nothing. So therefore, we want to commit this day, this time in your hands and ask you to take charge and to take lead. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, as we go into a time of prayer, I want to read a verse that I read it and I say, wow, the children of Israel, what was wrong with you? But then I realized I'm more than them. Um, the Bible says in Numbers chapter 13, verse, verse 30, Then Caleb quietened the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. What had been said before, the Bible says in verse 28, they, they say, nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and the cities are very large. Oh, we are afraid. We can do it. We can go. I don't know. Is there a situation in your life where you are looking at the situation and all you are seeing is giants? And you feel like a grasshopper in that situation. You feel like you are, you, God is saying you are about to cross over to your promised land. But when you are looking at the exams, you are looking at your family, you are looking at your marriage, you are looking at your siblings, you are looking at your children, and you are saying, God, I am afraid. As we go into a time of prayer, you tend to your friend. I want you to go knowing that that which was causing the children of Israel to be afraid, God knew it. This was in Numbers chapter 13, but as I get excited and open my Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 9, I hear, so while we are going to pray, you are going to pray thanking God for your challenge. Because he is going to go before you and show you that he is God. He says, hear, O Israel. Hear, O Sophia. Hear, O Pastor Nyambane. Hear, O Michaela. Hear, O my sons and daughters here. This here. And listen carefully. You are about to cross over the Jordan today. Let me tell you, you are about to go and dispossess nations. I know. This is the scripture speaking, you know. The nations are greater and mightier than yourself. God knows that you are about to cross over. He also knows that what you are facing is greater, is mightier. And he knows that the people, in verse 2, the people are great. And they are told, the descendants of Anakim. And God even says, who can stand them? 
But he is saying, therefore understand today, my friends. God is saying, I will go before you. So may you turn to the person who is seated next to you as we finish the verse. He says, he will go before you and destroy the nations. And yours is to celebrate. So turn to the next to the person seated next to you and just pray. Don't ask them. Don't talk about the challenge. Know that they have a challenge. And ask God to do something in that challenge. Amen. Father God, we want to thank you for the challenges that we daily face. As we pray, as I pray for the people online, as I pray for the people online, I pray, God, for that challenge that they are facing. They are looking at the situation and they are saying the, the, the situation is greater, it's mightier, it's tall, it's big, it's, an, it's like a Goliath. But I want to thank you, God. That no matter the Goliath, you are above the Goliath. You are above the situation. You said you go before your children and they will cross over into the blessings that you have for them. So we thank you, our Father, that you have heard and you are answering this prayer that we are praying. Hear our cry, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Now we are just going into a time of worshiping our loving God. The person whom you prayed with, catch up with them later and you are going to pray with them. Those online, I pray that you call someone today. Don't be alone in that struggle. Let someone call someone to pray with you, to stand with you, and you indeed will see the glory of God. Welcome to this morning. Amen. Amen, amen. One thing we've been doing for our praise and worship is trying to wake you guys up. Now, I hope you, you, you're not expecting some slow mellow songs. We're going to go straight into it today. One thing we do when we pray is we trade our sorrows with the Lord. We lay down our sickness and we lay down our shame and our pain. So we're going to sing Trading My Sorrows together. Let's wake up together. Let's sing together. Let's enjoy this wonderful praise on Trading My Sorrows. I'm trading my, I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness and I'm trading my pain. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down. I'm laying it down. Uh, I want to hear you guys sing this morning. So I'm trading my sorrows. Go from the top. I'm trading my. Yeah, nice morning voice. I'm trading my shame. Yeah, I'm laying it down. Right, let's help them, guys, on the sickness. Let's trade our sickness and trade our pain with the Lord. So I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. Yeah, I'm trading my pain. Yeah. I'm laying it down. I'm laying them down. This is one more time. I'm trading my 
more time for the talk. Dig up. Dig up. Say, oh, I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shit. I'm trading my shit. I'm laying it down. I'm laying yeah. it down for the joy of the Lord. This morning we're going to trade our sickness and we're going to trade our pain. I'm trading my, yeah. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm trading my yeah. pain. Yeah, listen to the chorus now. I'm laying it down. I'm laying yeah. Let's take the tune. Let's get to the chorus. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on. Yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yeah. Say yes, Lord. Yeah. Let's get to the chorus again. Say yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, I'm, I'm trading, I'm trading my, yeah, I'm trading yeah. my sorrow, I'm trading my shame, I'm trading yeah. my shame, I'm laying it down, I'm laying it down, for the joy of the I want to hear you guys, let's trade our sickness, I want to hear them, I'm trading my sickness, sound good, sound good, Yes, Philippe, I'm laying it down, yeah. I like them singing, I want to hear them sing one more time. Sounds nice. I'm trading my soul, I'm trading my, I'm trading my, yeah. I'm trading my shame, yeah. I'm laying it down. All right, let's help them out with the sickness, guys. Let's trade our sickness. Sing with them. Say, I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm trading my pain. Yeah. So I'm laying it down. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, 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 Lord. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Say yes, come on, don't Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Come on. Yes, yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Say 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 yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord.
Let me sing that verse again. I want to hear you guys say, sing them over again to me. Ooh, harmonies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gorgeous. Let me more. Yeah, wonderful one. Let's go to the chorus. Words of life and beauty. Yeah. Teach me the beautiful words. Beautiful words. Wonderful words. Yeah, wonderful words of life. Wonderful Sounds lovely. Words of life. Beautiful words. Verse 2 now. It says, Christ the Blessed One. Can you say, Christ the Blessed One? Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. Say, sinless to the loving core. Say, wonderful words of life. We give us a pass and also freely. Take the tune. Oh, so freely. Come on now. The beautiful words. Beautiful words. Yeah, wonderful. wonderful They're just wonderful words, words of life. Wonderful words of life. This worship is touching with the beautiful words. Beautiful yeah, yeah, wonderful words. Wonderful Let's go to verse three. Words, Say sweetly echo. Words, Say sweetly echo. Sweetly echo the gospel. Yeah. Say wonderful words of life. Yeah, so offer and pardon and peace to all. Let's sing that verse again. I want to hear you guys say sweetly echo. Say sweetly echo, sweetly echo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That alto is strong. Gorgeous. Lovely, lovely, lovely. I want to hear that again. I love it when you guys sing. Say sweetly echo, sweetly echo. Pass. So offer, offer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Say wonderful words. Say Jesus only save. Let's go. Say Jesus, say Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful words. Say wonderful words of life. Say beautiful words. I want to go for verse one again. Just to, just the first verse again. Sing me, guys. Say, sing them over again to me. Sing, 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 sing them over. Yeah, wonderful words of life. Say, let me more of the beauty see. Can we cut the music and go from top again? Just the drums. Say, sweetly echo. Say, sweetly echo. Say, wonderful words of life. I want to hear voices this morning. Beautiful. Let's go. Say words of life. Sing words of life. Words of life. Let's go to the chorus. Beautiful words. Yeah. Say wonderful words. Beautiful words. Say beautiful words again. Wonderful words, wonderful words. Say beautiful words, say beautiful words. Beautiful words, wonderful words. Wonderful, wonderful words. words of life. Say beautiful words. Beautiful words, wonderful words. Yeah, wonderful words of life. Wonderful words of life. Lovely, lovely, lovely singing with you guys this morning. Amen. Wonderful words, wonderful words of love. Amen, amen. We want to praise God and thank God that we can hear. We are ready. Are you ready online? Are you ready? Say yes to hear beautiful words. 
and those who are in the house, those who are, in, you know, they want to hear that we are many here. Yeah, amen. So those who are in the house, are you, are, are you ready to hear the wonderful words? Yes, amen. Therefore, let us pray for our pastor as he comes. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus, into your hands we commit your son. Many times when you send forth a, a word, it brought healing, it brought deliverance, it brought hope, it brought transformation. So, dear God, speak, for we are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. One, two, one, two. Good morning, precious saints. How are you doing? Good, amen, to see you. It's great to see you. I'm going to start, well, yeah, yeah, I'm going to start this here and I am going to put my secret password. One, two, three, four. <laughs> it's okay. We are just in YouTube. Oh, oh, it didn't work. It's going to work. Let me see. Oh, Lord. Um, ay, ay, ay. No, 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 no. It's going to work. It's going to work. Um, one more time. No problem. It was one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> um, I don't know if um, it is. It's, um, um, it's, it, it's, it's connected, isn't it? Can it, can it be there? No. Yeah, good, it's there. <sighs> wow. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I'm always ready in case if these things, you know, do not work, either in a copy book or sometimes it go, goes like this. Yes. May the Lord bless you all. It's good to be here. We are going to meditate um, in a few, a few verses, yeah, uh, in, in this um, early uh, morning devotionals, we are going to meditate in a few verses of a, of a chapter that we know very well. Um, but first, I would like to tell you about a story of two bottles of water. That's right. They are actually the same, and they both contain uh, 500 milligrams of water. So they had a conversation and said, hey, how are you doing? I said, I'm doing fine. How are you? I said, I'm doing well. Um, he says, I see that we have a lot of things in common. Yeah. And then he said, well, uh, how many millimeters of water are you? He said, 500. And he said, me too. Ah, oh, so look at them. They're so happy. How much are you worth? And this one said, uh, 29p. That's, you know, 29 cents. That's... How do you know that? He said, well, because that's what my boss, you know, not my boss, my owner, in the, in the market where I am. Where, what is that market? It's called Little Tiny Limited Market. Everything must go. Oh, wow, that's so interesting. So, um, so how much is it that you said that you're worth? He said, well, 20, 29 pence, 29, you know, pennies. Oh, okay. Um, and how, uh, what about you? How much are you worth? And then he said, well, I am worth five pounds. What, what do you mean five pounds? Yeah, five pounds, like one, two, three, four, five, like the password that we just saw now. Oh, okay. Um, uh, but how many millimeters of water do you have? 500. But it is just the same. We are actually identical and... If my bottle broke, I am sure that we can make a transplant of water and I will function normally. We are just the same. I say, yes, we are. Well, where do you live? And this bottle said, I live at the airport. <laughs> so... If you are underappreciated, 
If people do not value you where you are, if you feel that you are ostracized, rejected, unnoticed, and if you hear the owner of the little limited supermarket, everything must go, saying that you are 29 pence, it's not because you are worthless. It's because you are in the wrong place. Don't be angry at them. They just don't know. But you know. And that's what matters. I don't know if you are presiding a committee or a board at school. It could be even at home. People devalue you, minimize you ostracize you, and you feel like you are worth nothing. No, but we are going to change that today. Because the only thing, the only thing that is happening is that you are in the wrong place. That's all. So the next time they talk, they finish the conversation by saying, oh, how, does it, how is it going? So, well, I know my worth now. And every time I hear the owner of the little market saying, people come in and say, how much for that bottle of water? I said, 29 pence. He said, nah, I am worth five pounds. So it's not what they say. It's what God says. It's not what they think. It's what God thinks. And now we need to be on God's side. Because God can say that you are worth dying for. But besides knowing it, I need to believe it. And if I don't believe it, I will repeat it until I believe it. But you are worth the blood of God. That's a lot. Amen. Yes, Jesus knew that. And what we are going to do briefly, we are going to just travel a little bit through this situation that we have here in John, in, in John chapter 4, where we have an encounter with the uh, Samaritan woman. But usually we overlook sometimes how it all began. In the beginning of the chapter, the Bible says that there was a problem where he was, and that because there was that problem, the Pharisees knew that he was baptizing, and that he was preaching, and all these things, and they got angry at Jesus. Why? Well, because they didn't know their worth. And when I do not know my worth, you will make me nervous. When I know my worth and I see you succeeding, I will congratulate you and pray for you. I say, I'm so happy you're doing well. I'm praying for you. I'm so happy, man. When I grow up, I want to be just like you. But when you don't know your worth and you think that your worth depends on the surroundings and opinions, you will get nervous. And so they got angry at him because he was baptizing. But he decided to go from there the Bible says he decided to go from there to Galilee, from Judea to Galilee. So you see, Jesus knew that there was a situation, and he didn't impose himself. He didn't force anybody to accept him. Yes, he didn't say, well, I created you, I am God, and you are going to worship me now. He said, no, no, it's okay. If, 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 if you are... Uh, displeased with me, if, if, if I am causing a problem here, if, if there is a situation with the Pharisees, the Bible says here at the beginning of the chapter, John uh, chapter 4, then I will go, no problem. But that can only happen. You can only let go of that when you know who you are in Jesus Christ. When you know who is your worth. I, I have somebody very close to me, and he was the founder of an amazing ministry many, many, many years ago many years ago, and um, there was a situation. He began this project, and people were happy about it, but there were some people who were not happy about that. An amazing man of God. This is amazing uh, man of God. And you know what he decided to do? He decided to leave the country. He said, it's okay, Mr. Such and Such, and honorable members of 
Jupiter, I am going to go. It's okay. And he went somewhere else. And that place where he went, he made another ministry with the church. And people were baptized. And people came to the Lord. Wherever he went, the Lord blessed. This is what is happening here. Because Christ was rejected in chapter 1, God took that and transformed it into an opportunity to save a Samaritan woman and the whole village. Now imagine Jesus crying over that. They don't like me, and I want them to like me. Let me see if I resurrect some more dead people and see what happens. Maybe if I do this or that or the other. But he didn't try to convince them. He didn't impose there. You know, he let this okay. No problem. Well, if it is not working here, then let me go all the way up to Galilee. <laughs> all the way up to Galilee. For that... For us to have that attitude, we, it will require a spiritual maturity. To understand, Jesus did it. Jesus understood many places in the Bible. Take a look at it, and you will see that when he went somewhere and he was not accepted, he didn't cause a riot. He didn't divide the church. He didn't make a little group over here talking about that or the group over there. I'm dividing and causing chaos and havoc. No. He said, well, I think that this closed door is God telling me to move this way. We talk a lot about open doors, but we have to thank God for closed doors too. You don't know what is on the other side. But whenever we see Christ being rejected in one side... And being ostracized on one side or mistreated. He, we talk a lot about Christ going to the cross. But he spent 33 years running away from the cross. It wasn't time, he said. No, 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 it's not time. And no, whoa, whoa. no, 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 no. That's a heart attack and, and no time for that. Let me go this way. Christ, Christ spent 33 years taking care of himself. All the miracle that we see in chapter 4 took place because Christ knew his worth and he decided he was going to move on regardless of the situation and these unpleasant circumstances there. And he said, you know what? Let me go somewhere else. And he did it. And so this is the map. He moves to from Judea all the way up to Galilee. Did you see all of that? And uh, what is in between Judea and Galilee? Samaria. And the Bible says, and he had to go through Samaria to go to Galilee. Not necessarily. He didn't have to. In fact, the way in those days um, ancient Jews went to, to Galilee, instead of going all the way here, I don't know if you can see the arrow. Let me move this way and then show the arrow here. You see Judea here, right? And... Um, Instead of going to, um, through Samaria, what they would do is that they went all the way across the River Jordan, all the way, and then came all the way here to Galilee. You know, I said my apologies, please, because I was supposed to put this arrow all the way here. It was supposed like this, and then I just came here. But it's a little bit, a little bit here. That's what they did. Judea, they crossed the River Jordan, and then went all the way to Galilee, avoiding Samaria. So Jesus didn't have to go through Samaria. He went through Samaria because when he was rejected all the way down here in Judea, the Lord told him, don't worry about it. I have somebody I would like you to save in Samaria. Closed doors. In God's hands, they are open doors. We need to thank God. Whenever you see a closed door in your, in your life, just ask the Lord, what do you want me to do now? If this door is closed, I am just, I just, I'm expecting to see what are you going to do now. Take a look at it like that. And he went all the way there to Galilee. The Bible says that then, that he crossed the border. He was intentional. And the first border that he crossed was a physical border. We're going to cross a few borders very quickly and see where it takes us in John 4. Yeah, physical border, the first one. So he prayed about it, but he also walked. So in order for him to get to Samaria, yes, it's okay to pray. But there are some situations in your life, in my life, in our churches, in workplaces, in which we will have to say, well, 
We are here. We need to pray, but we also need to do something about it. I was in a place where there was somebody, you know, there was somebody complaining about the tables. And the tables were dirty. And the tables were not arranged. And the tables were here. And the tables, oh, every single Sabbath, it was the same song. Until one day, I share this with you. Until one day, I felt the Lord telling me, you know what? I think it's time to create a new ministry. That morning I came. It was, I didn't even have the chance to say happy Sabbath. When I arrived there, she came and said, the tables, the tables are all over the place. Uh, that morning I said, sister, I feel in my heart the Lord has chosen you to be the director of the ministry of tables in this church. <laughs> Can you believe it's still working? <laughs> Every now and then I receive a text say, look at the tables, I'm, I'm still working. So... It's, it's, it's not only that this crisis is an opportunity, but it's also we need to do something about it. We need to do something about it. And he did it. He crossed the border. He went physically there. He moved into that direction, into the direction of God's blessing. It's not enough for me to pray about it. I need to also be where his light shines. Yes, it's like saying, I'm not going to make it difficult. Here I am, Lord, use me. And he is doing this. And we did it with that, um, uh, with that ministry of tables that is, still, uh, uh, that is still working there. Move into that direction. I was living in a neighborhood, and the name of the neighborhood was the Green Garden. And the Green Garden was because they sell some things there, you know, if you understand what I mean. Yeah, it was illegal substances. And there was somebody called the secretary. The secretary was called secretary because he was the secretary of the group. And he was the one dispatching when people came to buy these drugs and things. So he would be the one taking the notes. And he was the secretary. And then he was the, there was the boss also. The boss was there. And he was the head of the, of, of, of the, of the group. Now, they were there, and I was, I, was, I was watching these things. Sometimes they didn't have food to eat. They didn't have anything. And what we did is that, well, when I, if I cooked, I cooked, and I shared the food with them. And also called them brother. That's the most precious thing. The, the most precious name that they used with me was when they called me brother. I felt so good. And I, and I would tell them, thank you. Some of them were CEOs of companies. And they lost everything. One of them spoke 14 languages. And now he was eating garbage, literally. On the, destroyed by drugs and, 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 and alcohol. And, and some of the neighbors will call them parasites. This is how they refer to them. And so, but I didn't even know what was going on. I said, no, don't call them parasites. No, they are not that. How are you doing, brother? And they would come and, uh, do you have food? I say, yes, we have food. You know, I love cooking. This is one thing that probably you should know about me. I love cooking. I didn't say that I cook good, right? I said that I love cooking. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> you know, I love cooking. I love math too, you know, mathematics. <laughs> so I love cooking. And they will come. And it was so amazing to see them. Some of them were burned. Some of them were uh, missing when they were going to, uh, to give themselves the, 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 the shot. They will miss the vein, and that arm didn't look good, you know. We will get alcohol um, to, for them, and you know the one that I mean, um, and, and water and things, or a new trouser, or whatever was there. You have a spare shoes there. They were barefoot. These are ex-CEOs of big chains of hotel. Now, they were eating garbage, literally. Um, so... They were brothers. Here is food. How are you doing? How is it going? And we will talk every day. They didn't know what was happening. I left the place. I went abroad to study. And I came back and visited the church. Guess who was in church? I didn't give a single Bible study to them. Guess who was in church? And not only that, the secretary... That was distributing was a secretary in the department of deacons. <laughs> and the head of the gang, when I came, was 
not the head, the, the head director, he was the subdirector of the department, but he was also one of the heads of the department. Isn't that amazing? And when I, I what are you, what? And we hug and cry and just say, and the, the, the leader say, and guess who is here? The secretary was here. Jimmy, Jamal, and Charlie was also here. The whole gang is here. This is a true garden of Eden now. <laughs> Intentional. You know, love them intentionally. Yes, and this is what Jesus did there. The physical border, it was required to, for us to move literally to do it. Nobody's doing it in your church, you do it. Instead of saying, well, nobody's loving, nobody's smiling, nobody's is welcoming, you do it. You start. It only took 12 to revolutionize the world. And Christ did it. He chose 12 and revolutionized his. He broke history in two, before and after Christ, with 12 people. It's not happening in your church. You do it. And don't give up. The Bible says that love will triumph. You do it. You know, they are not doing it. They don't like to do it. They don't want to do it. You do it. In the university where I was there, I was one of the deacons in front of welcoming in the Vespers. And uh, one afternoon, somebody came. Afternoon, the, the chapel, beautiful, 700 people. This family came in, and when they came in, I just simply say, hello, welcome, happy Sabbath. This is the door, sit, whatever you like. There is a chair over here. The man, thank you very much. And then the mama, thank you very much. And the daughter, thank you very much. And the son, thank you very much. And they went in. The next thing that I remember is that this man came back to me. I even forgot and said, a few days ago, we came here. We came just to see the place and see if we could send our daughter to study here. You were at the door and you say, hello, how you doing? We felt so welcome that we will not only send our daughter, we will send all our children to this university. They did it. And then I told the director, I need my commission for that. <laughs> you do it. Amen. You do it. That was a physical border. But there is another border he crossed. He also crossed the social border. He not only walked, but he went to Samaria. And Samaria and the Jews were enemies. And there was this racism covered with religiosity on going on there. And hence, you know, avoid him. The place, yeah, because they were mixed with pagans, and when they came back from the captivity from Syria, they were marrying Canaanites, therefore, you are not purely, and all of that stuff was going on. And that not, not only affected them uh, um, socially, but also, <clears throat> but also uh, spiritually and theologically, there was a problem there a social border, thou shalt not pass. As somebody said somewhere in a movie, uh-huh. But Jesus didn't let his race interfere with his faith. You are a Jew. John 4, 9. You are a Jew. How is it that you're talking to me? Why not? We are the same in the end. Exactly the same. He didn't let... His race interfered with his mission. He didn't put himself in the little box. And I will not talk to you. He expanded his calendar. He was inclusive intentionally. That was a border, and you need to be courageous to do that. Because you might be rejected. You might not be. But you might be. But the thing is that he is willing to cross it. Are you willing to cross that border too? I would like you to take a look at your mobile and see how many friends from other countries do you have there? <laughs> do all your friends look like you? Do all my friends speak Spanish and eat rice and beans like me? Do I have everything there? In, 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 when we do our camps and things department, we are intentional about social integration. We don't leave it to the chance. 
You cannot leave it to the chance. And there are people that actually, God forbid, may be getting angrier and angrier as we are speaking about this because church is not the house of God, but it's a little club. And we hate everything else that doesn't look like or talk like me. It's like my own little heaven. Enjoy it. Because in the heaven, according to the Bible that we see here, we will have every tongue, race, and nationality. There is a verse that for me is, is kind of funny because it says that there are seven gates. And then it says that in the center there is no temple. Which means that when we go all through the gates, we will see each other again. Like, <laughs> oh, you are here. And the best way will be to start practicing now. Amen. Social borders, intentional, it will not happen by accident. Unity is not an accident. We need to work it every day. In our camps, we do it. And we tell our teens, all teens are created equal. You are all brothers and sisters. And we keep saying it, and we say it again and again and again and again. We need to rush. But it's intentional, my brothers and sisters. That border, we need to cross it intentional. Religious and theological borders, when there is something, the, the, the conversation is, but, he said, but we have to worship in that mountain. And you said that it's in Jerusalem, but we said that it's here in the Mount Parisian. And Jesus didn't demonize her. Although they disagree, he didn't say, you are a demon. You are wrong. You, he didn't. He walked through the conversation with, them, with her. There are people that are willing to win a conversation and lose a soul. As long as I am right, I don't care what I cause. And I will say however I want to say it because it's the truth. Really, enjoy your truth. Treatment is more powerful than dogma and than doctrine. People are not so interested in, in, in your being Right, if you treat them wrong. He didn't demonize her. He didn't ostracize her because they disagree. It's amazing to see how Jesus disagreed with her, isn't it? He disagreed in such a way that at the end she went out to say, this man is right. I have a friend. He is very kind, very kind. And when he speaks, he could disagree with you. I was telling him, man, you, can't, you, you, you are so kind to people that you can insult them. And I would say, wow, that was a beautiful insult. Can you please insult me again? <laughs> Look at him, how, how he woke her. And he didn't let the theological or religious differences to create, <clears throat> sorry, to create a war. We do that. If you are wrong, you are with the devil. That's it. We demonize it. And there is not a, a, a fastest process to destroy somebody than to demonize them. But when I demonize you, I already dehumanize you. You are not a human being anymore. And let me tell you one thing. This is one of the principles used for genocides and these things. The first step, if you take a look in history, every time there is a nation that, that destroys other, nurse, the other nation, the first thing that they think is that they are inferior they are cockroaches. Take a look in history and you will see. They demonize them. Once you are not a demon, I have all the right to destroy you because you are nobody. I am human. You are not. You are not. But amazingly, we do that to one another. When we say you are wrong and this is a right, you are not with God. We are demonizing, dehumanizing people. We do that in church. We can do that also at home or anywhere else. But today is the day that we will cross the border. Amen? No more. We will treat people like human beings as they are, with respect and dignity. Amen? I have a friend that is, um, he is an atheist, and we are good friends. And we talk about it, and he tells me, we, we joke and talk, he said, Man, I have shared this, so apologies for those who have heard this already. He said, man, you have to be really not right in your head. Uh, um, and, and he would use the word not intelligent. You have, to, you have to, your IQ must be very low for you to believe in a talking snake in the Garden of Eden. 
you know. He tells me that. And we laugh about it. Say, so, well, yeah. So you're telling me that my IQ is very low because I believe in a talking snake in the Garden of Eden. But your IQ is high because you believe that a fish came out of water, it started walking, became a monkey, then an iguana, then a horse, and then a dinosaur. And, then a, and you are more intelligent than me because of that. <laughs> and he laughs and says, well, I have to stop talking with you because you will convert me. <laughs> He says that we disagree, but it's marvelous the way that we speak. We don't have to insult and swallow and beat and tear our flesh. We don't have to do that. We, we can cross that border. Amen. We can. The, what I will do, I will leave it here. I will leave it here because time is gone already. I will leave it here. I think this is one of the big issues we have. The humanization of one another in our churches. When I am right, I have the right to hurt you. Somewhere in the back of the head, that's how it reads. It's not so. You can disagree respectfully in the name of Jesus. And that at the end of that conversation, even if we didn't agree, we can go out there and have a vegetarian whopper or, or something, whatever it is. I have to say vegetarian because, you know. Does that make any sense? Yes. We don't have to be beating and, and, and hurting one another. We don't have to. In fact, disagreeing with dignity is a sign of a spiritual maturity. You are not a little child. You have to agree with me. and you, have to, you don't have to do that. Good that we don't disagree. I have never seen it that way. This is a very interesting way. Where did you get that information from? How did you arrive to that conclusion? That's, those are words that we can use instead of saying, you are going to hell. I already see that mark of the beast appearing. Your, I can smell the smoke. Somebody's burning already. You know. I have to, we have to go now. Let me just tell you that at the end, this lady, this reject, we begin with Jesus being rejected, and we end with this lady being rejected. Also, he was, she was a reject in her village. This lady, this lady became the evangelist of the whole village because somebody treated her with respect and dignity. All these prejudices and preconceptions and all these borders, Christ crossed them one by one. Personal borders, religious borders, uh, social borders, theology, all of them borders. <laughs> Somebody would say, he crossed them smoothly with dignity and respect. And in the end, we have the first lady evangelist there in Samaria. Amen, somebody. I'm gone. I'm gone. 17 years old, more or less. Um, I have shared this story with, with some of you. I will be very quick with this story. Very, very quick. 17, 18 years old. And I saw this lady standing in the, in the, in the, in the bus stop every day. I used to work in a store from 11 in the night to 7 in the morning. 11 in the night, 7 in the morning, I was cleaning and preparing food. There she was in the bus stop waiting for cars to pick her up. I didn't know what was going on. I thought that she had a lot of friends that had nice cars. That's what I thought, you know. And one day she was waiting for somebody to pick her up. It was about 3 o'clock in the, in the morning. And somebody, something told me in my heart, bring her some food. So I went to the kitchen and I prepared some food, prepared a long sandwich and a big glass of juice. And I came and told her, listen. I was in, uh, there uh, in the, I, I work here, and uh, something told me in my heart to bring you this food for you to eat. And she said something I will never forget. Thank you so much, my son. She said, thank you so much, my son. I said, no, my pleasure. It was 3 o'clock in the morning, and I didn't know who I was talking to. We sat there while she eat. I will sit with you here. We sat there. We were talking, and we were joking, and we were like, ah, ha, ha. A car packed with brothers and sisters from the church passed by and said, hey, elder. You know, said, wow, I didn't know what was happening. So I came and said, hey, I'm right here. She told me, where do you, do you go to church or something? Where do you live? And said, I go to church. That one in the corner is literally from where I was, is in the, was in the corner. I was there. Yeah, I go there. Okay, well, have a good time and uh, see you later. The next Sabbath, I was directing the sun service in the church. Uh, we are marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. All the saints were marching towards Zion, their heads upward to Zion. And there we were talking. Suddenly, the first elder came to me while I was directing the sun service and said, 
Somebody's looking for you out there. It's a lady that we all know well. And uh, she said that you were with her a few nights ago and that you had a wonderful time. <laughs> you had a wonderful time. That's what she said. So she came back. <laughs> I said, lady. Yes, three o'clock. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we have. <laughs> yeah. It was great. I was about 19 or 18, you know. When I see all the way straight outside, she was smiling. And she said, that's the one. <laughs> I didn't know I was disfellowshipped also, almost. I didn't know that I was walking toward my disfellowshipment. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> I go there, and as I am walking through the aisles, the heads of the saints that once were singing about marching to Zion, they were turning their necks towards Egypt now, looking. <laughs> there she was, outside the wall that divides the yard of the church from the public pathway because she said, I am not worthy to step in the yard of the church. That's what she said. And suddenly, something told me there when I was walking, oh my goodness, the cars, the people passing by, the head of the, the, the attitude of the, 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 the face of the elder, the saints turning their necks towards Egypt told me something in my heart, I promise you. She is a prostitute. I was dealing with a public servant I didn't know. <laughs> was there. Now that I know, I'm afraid of the saints. I don't want to stretch my hand. And so I'm afraid now they are looking. I'm there. I extend my hand. Like a Pharisee, because I don't want the saints to think bad that I'm talking with this person. And when I extend my hand, she takes it. It's me from a few nights ago. Don't you remember? And she pulled me and hugged me and did this. And everybody was like, we lost him. We lost him. I will make it short. She got baptized. And when I went back, amen, yes. <laughs> she got baptized, and she, Mr. President, she's one of the most wonderful, dynamic, spiritual Sabbath school leaders I have ever seen. Not only that, he went back to that place when the girls are working, and she began to give Bible studies and bring girls to the church. In the name of Jesus, you can make it too. What about we cross that border? Amen. Let's go. Let's do it. It's not happening. You make it happen in your church. Whatever the prejudice or border, be that change you want to be like the Lord Jesus. Just cross. Don't go around. Don't avoid. Go to them. Be intentional about the salvation of others. Be intentional about your salvation. Be intentional about your well-being. Be intentional about loving them. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. 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 Oh, it's wonderful. We'll share a few more stories. I don't even, I'm still in church. I wasn't this fellowship. We will share a few more, but time is going now, so we're going to pray. We're going to pray for those that are here and those that are at home that maybe are feeling down, rejected, isolated. You know what? There is love and there is mercy for you in the name of Jesus. And that woman didn't know what the Lord was going to do through her on that morning. It was a beautiful surprise. The Lord had plans for her. The Lord has plans for you too. You don't know yet what the Lord is about to do with you. When that woman woke up, woke up that morning, she never imagined that she would be the first, the first evangelist to the whole nation Say, you know what? He told me everything that I have done and he didn't mistreat me. Yes. Father, thank you so much for your mercy and love. Thank you for the saints here. Transform us, Father. Help us to cross the borders. There are many borders. Many, many borders. And um, we want you to use us to break those walls. To be an instrument of peace and unity where we are. And if we have made mistakes, and if we have created walls, we today confess our sins, Lord, and we want you to transform us as we, as, we, as we walk across, as we go across these borders, as we move from one place to the other in your name. 
Help us, Lord, to be a, an instrument of peace and reconciliation wherever we go, of unity and healing, of integration, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be that instrument like you, Lord. Help us, Lord, to treat one another like you treated her, Lord. Help us to, to learn from you, Lord. Transform us, Lord. We, we open our hearts to you this morning, and we ask you to change our hearts, Lord. We need it, Lord. It's full of hate and prejudice and racism and, 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 and bad ideas about ourselves and about others, Lord. But you are, you are capable of cleaning our souls. And today, we want you to give us a heart like yours that loves everybody, Father. Thank you for saying yes, because all your promises are yes and amen in Jesus. And we declare these things done in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. God bless you all. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Amen, amen, amen. God's love is so amazing. Michaela, God bless you, Pastor. Wow, what we just want to continue to be in the presence of God. Uh, they, they, they were looking at the time, but hey, God is too good. The psalmist begins by saying, I will bless the Lord. At, oh, they want to know that we are many in the house, yeah? I will bless the Lord at, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Why? Why? I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all my fears. There is a mother in the house. She prayed, but I won't take the glory. My sister Bridget, come forward. A mother prayed. Are you a mother praying? Are you a sister praying? Hear this testimony and share the glory and hear the glory of God. Welcome, darling. Thank you. If you asked me two years ago, will I be here? Not a chance. But today I am here. And because of my prayers from my mum, my my, nie my niece and my sister, 37 years. So when I was hearing uh, Michaela's story yesterday about she was planning to leave church at 16, it resonated with me because that's when I left church. So I was born in the Seychelles, uh, came over here, and um, I did not know God. Um, my knowledge of God was I ought, I must and, and that's what I did. You know, I was waiting uh, on a Sabbath for a uh, Sabbath to end. I did not have a relationship with God. And when it was time to go, I was out of there. And 37 years, I carried on my life. Not even, in fact, I didn't even believe in God. I was questioning it. But it came a time in November 2020, 18 months ago, when... Um, I was um, doing feng shui, I was doing meditation, I was doing all kind of things. I, I think I was searching for something, but I didn't recognize it at the time. Um, so I was doing feng shui, and feng shui says that to have a book of knowledge in the south facing of your room. So I went upstairs in the attic, dusted off my old Bible um, that my mom gave me some, some 20 years uh, previously, or whenever it was. Uh, and it was at the bottom of my bed and didn't think anything, anything of it. I was following my feng shui, which is book of knowledge. Um, and there was one Friday night, the, the 3rd of November, I think it was, 2021, um, uh, 2020. And uh, I was working at my laptop at 9.30 in the evening. And there's a thought came into my mind, observe the Sabbath tomorrow. I don't know where it came from. I wasn't searching for God. Um, and I thought, yes, I'll observe the Sabbath tomorrow. Closed my laptop, went to bed, and I woke up. First thing that popped into my mind, you said you would observe the Sabbath tomorrow. And I thought, okay then. So I reached for my Bible, and um, I started reading. And I'm thinking, I, I don't need, I would, you, if you ask me what is the first word of the Bible, I would not have known uh, in the beginning, God created. No, I did know. Um, so I'm thinking, where do I start? Matthew. I'll start with Matthew. And 8 o'clock in the morning, I started reading about Matthew, and I did not look up for my Bible until 5 o'clock. And the Holy Spirit was with me. And I was, I grabbed a black bag, and I started throwing all my little Buddhas all my little idols, God was with me saying, you don't need this, you don't need that. Um, and from that day, I wanted to go to work, I wanted to phone my boss and say, I cannot work on a Friday evening. Uh, but I waited to Monday and I said to him, I can't work on a Friday, I need Friday afternoons off. And he said to me, oh Bridge, but you, you're very important, you're management, you, you, we, can't, we can't give you Friday afternoons off. Um, I said, well, 
is really important to me. And, and I know that, that I'm important a member of staff, so I was also using that card. I'm saying, it's really important to me. He said, OK, I'll think about it. So on the Thursday, um, I, uh, I, I uh, spoke to him, and he said to me, oh, I haven't had time to think about it. And I was praying. And you know what? When you believe in God, you don't have to worry. There is no panic. There is no fear. I just knew it was going to happen. And um, um, the following Thursday, so I took an afternoon off that first Friday, and, uh, and I went, uh, I think it was online because of COVID. And the, the following Thursday, uh, I had a meeting with him, and I said, look, after the meeting, can we have a chat? And do you know what? He just said to me, not a problem. Yes, you can have Friday afternoons off, which was just very unusual. But what I'd like to say is, do not be weary in prayer. Never be weary in prayer. It took 37 years for God to find me because I wasn't looking for God. God was the one chasing me. I was running away from God, and then I did a U-turn, and then I bumped into him. He was right there, always, always there with me. But when you're not walking with him, you're blind. But actually, he's, he, he always loved me. He never left me. But I, what I would say is never be weary in prayer. Never give up. Um, Daniel 10, um, where the, uh, the angel Gabriel came and said, I came because of your words. I came because of prayer. So you might not think it's, it's working. Never give up um, because God is working. Um, you know, um, it, it, it it's an act of war yeah. in, the, the, in the great controversy prayer. Um, so what I would say is keep carrying. If it wasn't for my mum, my sister, my, my niece, always carrying on with prayer, I didn't even know what was... In fact, when my mum called me and said, can we pray together, I would say, no, I need to go now. We will talk. As soon as mum started talking about um, God... I did not want to know, but they never gave up. So what I would say is never give up and always carry on praying. Thank you. Amen, amen. There is power, 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 amen. There is power. You know, when I hear testimonies, it gives me time. Uh, it gives me the, the power to say, I can pray too, and God can do it. Amen. Amen. We are, you are here, and you are saying, pray for me also. Is there someone who is saying that? Amen. Amen. You are online, and you want the saints to pray for you. Just say, pray for me. You can write on the chat, pray. We are going to pray. For our prayers today, we will turn to Isaiah chapter 54, verses 1 and 2. I read, Sing, O barren, O barren, you who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud. You who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate. Amen. 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 I don't know what your barrenness is. Is it sickness? Is it rejection? Mm -hmm. Is it affliction of pain? Is it your children that are throwing you down? Is it your job places? Why have you come here? Why are you on the line? Is that, 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 that case that is set upon you? Pray for you as we bow into worship. Amen. King of kings, savior of the living world, we thank you for the word that came to us today, that you cross borders. Mm -hmm the social bodies, the religious, 
Father, in our church, there are so many barriers and walls within and outside. Today, we bring ourselves to you. We have sinned against you. We have talked, we have judged, we have condemned, we have, we have complained, and we have done wrongly to each other. Forgive us, we pray, and hear our prayer. Amen. Father, many of us are affected with illness and sicknesses. Amen. We have come that we will have a face-to-face -face encounter with you. Please, Lord, Amen. hear our pleas and heal us from our pain. We want to thank you for the cross. Amen. When you hang on the cross, and the blood that was coming on the, your head and your hand fitted and the six-inch nail in your hand. And the fries were over you and you could not even wave them away or even turn your head. And the blood was coming. It was because of us. Mm. It was when you say it is finished. Today we are crossing over. We are going through a new chapter, a new page. We are on our way to our Cana. King Jesus. Come, come, come. Holy Spirit, do your bidding. Children are running away from the church. Adults are running away. There are many differences and disintegrations in our heart. There are many conflicts within us. Many of us do not even have an encounter with you. Today save us, we pray. Father, for the requests on the line and those that have come with this, mm. do them according to your own time. In your own time, make everything beautiful. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Father God, we thank you for the requests of your children that continue to come this morning. We want to remember uh, the Michelle family. We want to remember uh, the Michelle family who are bereaved right now. Oh, Father God, who can understand their pain? Who can heal their wounds? Who can touch their wounds? Who can heal them? and help them to move. Who can do it? Oh, Father, we hear your word saying, I came for the brokenhearted. You say in your word, you comfort those who mourn. Oh, dear God, for those who are bereaved, including the Michelle family, as we pray for James and the Michelle family, Lord, we surrender them before you, and we pray that may you take their ashes and give them beauty. Amen. May you take their mourning and weeping and crying and pour upon them the oil of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Their necks are heavy because of the burden that they are carrying right now as they go through bereavement. But God, you are a wonderful father. We pray in the name of Jesus that your comfort will do like never before. May they hear like the children of Israel. You say to them, I carried you on my wings like an eagle. Carry them on your wings, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We yes. remember Sister Charlene Campbell, oh Father God, bereavement one after another, even our own pastor, he has still carried on to share your word, but he is bereaved. Pastor Juan Carlos, we want to remember that God carry him through father mm. god in the name of jesus Amen. father god who can comfort those who are mourning it is you because you can understand and feel the pain of your children in the name of jesus lord god i want to thank you for a young man m they have just heard the news that he, he took overdose last night oh god jehovah step in Arrive mm. at the bedside. Arrive. Do what you do best and set your child free. Yes. Father God, speak to him wonderful words, words of love. Oh God, what the enemy meant for evil, turn it around for your glory in the name of Jesus. Yes. We remember our team member, he is still not well. We remember vow Jehovah God. Oh Father, hear from heaven so that we too can say we sought the Lord mm. and he heard our cry and delivered us from all our fears. Yes. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayers. Oh, God, 
hear us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I thank you. Thank you all for coming this morning. Thank you all for tuning in this morning. Uh, you, 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 know, you know you have to say it loudly so that everyone listening online will hear. Did you enjoy yourselves here? Yes, amen, amen. Tomorrow we are having it special in the morning. Uh, but before tomorrow, there's a aftercare prayers. If you feel, if you feel you want someone, there are intercessors online right now. They have already joined in on Zoom. If you feel you want someone to pray with and to pray for you. The Zoom details are online. They are going to show them later. Uh, join in the Zoom. There are intercessors ready to pray for you. And how about us who are here? Tomorrow morning, come early. Tomorrow morning, amen? Come at 6 o'clock. And we have our 25 minutes of spending time in the presence of God. That request... I used to go to camp meeting every year and I would take my one request. It was for God to direct my paths. So I believe what he did for me, he can do for you. So six o'clock tomorrow, join as we worship. Then we'll begin our normal time, 6.30 online. But for now, come back again at 9.30. May the Lord bless you, the Lord watch over you, and the Lord continue to transform our lives for his glory. Amen. Amen. Amen.